Hello everyone, I'm Yong Lejo from Posttech. I will be presenting a paper tolerating latency in replicated state machines through client speculation. And this paper is presented at using NSDI 2009. Roughly speaking, there are two ways of BFT deployment. First one is to replicate the BFT machines at local, which could be easier to attack, while the other one is to replicate the BFT machines at globally distributed for maximum fault tolerance which is also known as geo-replication. However, the geo-replication causes much latency, so when the state machines try to reach consensus on total ordering of requests, the protocol latency is expected to be very high. Therefore, this paper presents a method to tolerate the latency in BFT setting using client speculation. Then what is the client speculation? Before explaining this idea, I will introduce some backgrounds this is a Byzantine for tolerance protocol, as in PBFT, in which a client broadcasts request and then the primary assigns a unique sequence number to the request and followed by two lines of also broadcast to finalize consensus value. Lastly, the replicas send a reply back to the client. We can easily observe that the communication pattern in PBFT could be a performance bottleneck, especially in the geo replication. To mitigate the performance problem, a speculative version of BFT protocol is presented. ZZBA is the representative protocol in this family, and in ZZBA protocol, there are two sub-protocols, including fast case protocol and the two-phase protocol. In the fast case protocol, only one phase of speculative execution is enough to achieve a consensus when all nodes act correctly and no timeout occurs. When a non-primary replica is faulty or some timeout to occur, then two-phase case protocol is triggered, in which an additional commit phase is involved with. In this digital-like speculative BFT protocol that is called server-side speculation, replicas track spe speculation, which means that speculative state is managed and, and tracked by each replicas, and this results in a high complexity under speculation failure, because a costly transition triggered at each replica with a repair protocol. Also, it induces a high latency in geo replication because in GGVA, client needs three plus one replies from replicas to commit speculatively. Against server side speculation, a client side speculation is newly proposed in this paper. In this client side speculation approach, Client tracks speculations, which means that speculative state is managed and tracked by your client. By virtue of this client-side state management, a repair protocol has low cost under speculation failure, and the protocol has also low latency because a client predicts a final consensus value from a first reply. Now let's see what the client-side speculation looks like. So the BFT protocol with client-side speculation is simply presented as in this figure. This protocol is same as PBFT protocol as shown previously, except for an additional message flow from primary to client. This added flow enables the speculation. More specifically, speculation is involved with three new messages, speculative request that is sent by client, and speculative execution that is speculatively executed by primary and the speculative response that carries the speculative execution results and is sent back to the, the client. Now let's take a look at an overview of client speculation scheme. There will exist a client at the center and the client sends a speculative request to a primary and receives corresponding speculative response from the primary and then the client records the speculative response in its local history to track states of speculations. And after some agreement protocol in BFT, then replicas confirms the speculative responses and send back to the client in the committed response. When client confirms each speculation is correct, then it updates its local history with the latest committed response point. For example execution, assume that the client has two committed responses, each numbered by three, four in the local history. Then client sends a new fifth 
speculative request to the primary and receives the PIP's speculative response from the primary, while false request is already committed by replicas. And the received PIP's response is logged in crunch local history. However, what if the speculation fails, meaning that crunch's prediction from a first reply from the primary doesn't match to the actual response? In this case, the PIP's speculative response doesn't match to the committed responses from replicas. Even worse, when clients consecutively submit speculative requests, which each of them depends on the previous speculative responses, and the first dependent request failed, then all the subsequent speculations should be failed because they are based on wrong information. So this is an overview of the how the client speculation is performed. Handling speculation is quite easy because clients need to roll back their history and relearn the failed request again and replicas detect the failed request and replace it with no operation. And the speculation collecting decision at a client occurs by comparing the speculative response in pre pre fair phase and the final consensus value in reply phase. And when the two values are different, then the client rolls back to the latest committed state and reissues the failed request. At the replica side, the speculation collecting its decision occurs in the final commit phase. And when it fails, then the replicas invalidate the speculations with no operations. Let's enlarge a replica's X speculation collecting its decision to understand the handling of speculation failures. As you can see the right figure, there is a new shim layer between state machine replication and the replication protocol. When the replica collects on enough quorum certificate in commit phase, then the replication layer sends a final consensus value to the shim layer. And then in the shim layer, replicas append the consensus value into commit logs and compares the log digest with the one in the per client dependencies. If those two are matched, then the replica updates its state by notifying the application. If they are not matched, then the replica simply aborts with no operation and does notify the application. And this whole process to validate the speculation is called predicate checking. Now I explain what constitutes per client dependencies, which is predicate right. Predicate write is a set of speculative write requests with dependency tracking information. The predicate is literally means a condition on whether to update its state or not. It updates its application state if dependency digests are in commit log, while it aborts to update if dependency digests are not in the commit log. The meaning of this predicate write has two folds. First, it enables a client to self-manage speculation dependencies, and second, it can make replicas avoid rollback under speculation failure because the replicas can simply determine speculation correctness based on, committed, based on committed responses as well as the dependency digest information in a predicate write that is provided by client. The format of speculative request contains operation field that specifies that the, the request is whether read or write, and the predicate write fields for dependency tracking information that will be utilized for checking speculation correctness by replicas. The predicate write consists of a set of active speculation on which the operation in the speculative request depends. And each active speculation contains a predicted response, which is a digest value, and client ID and timestamp. Speculation failures has three causes, such as bad primary, view change, and client contentions with concurrent read-write requests. The bad primary, the first reason, obviously incurs a speculation failure because the bad primary can return incorrect speculative response, and it also can reorder requests anomalously, such as placing a read request first and a write request with the same state for read second in a single batch. 
which invalidates a read request. And second cause is build change. This is because of the fact that speculative requests, depending on uncommitted data, can be discarded when entering a new view. View change protocol only guarantees to maintain replica side agreement messages, such as prepared messages and committed messages in a next new view. Third one is client contention with concurrent read write, and this occurs in read only optimization that I will explain in later slides. Handling failures. First, Detecting faulty primary is performed when the client compares an early reply from the primary with final consensus reply. And handling faulty primary can be divided into two cases. First case is used in a signature-based communication in which client can provide a proof of misbehavior of faulty primary. And this information can be used to enforce a view change by client. And second case is non-signature-based communication such as MAC. And in this case, client adjusts speculation. And the meaning of adjusting speculation is that the client can decide whether or not to speculate each request based on the probability. For example, the client can stop speculation if the percentage of failed speculation surpasses a predefined threshold, say, 1% of speculation failure. And it also can resume the speculation if the percentage of speculation failures recovers. Other handling failures method of checkpoint and rollback is discussed previously, so I skip this part. Next, I want to talk about read-only optimization. Read-only optimization is an optimization technique for read request in which a read-only request is sent to the nearest replica and is performed to read a state which is not serialized by agreement protocol. Because the read-only request is not serialized, it can fail due to concurrent write to the same state by other client. In this figure, a client located near the primary sends a write request on the same state, which results in a stale value in other replicas. So it invalidates the, the optimized read request. So there should be considerations when using read-only optimization. The first consideration is that the request cannot read uncommitted data. And this means that the client should avoid optimized reads when many concurrent writes exist. Second consideration is that the client should not follow a read with a write. This means that client should not write a value which is computed based on a value from optimized read request because the optimized read value can be potentially stale value, so the client should not submit any operation that modifies application state based on optimized reads. Third one is that the reply should be completely predictable. This means that if the client 100% correctly predicts an outcome of any request, then the client just uses its local reply cache for all requests without any agreement protocol. However, even if this situation occurs, it is good to submit the request through the agreement protocol because it doesn't hurt any performance. Practically, this 100% correct prediction is not feasible, so it is recommended to use optimized read request and agreement-based read request simultaneously. Implementation Authors implement PBFT-CS by extending the existing PBFT protocol in network file system or NFS, as in this figure. At the client side, there exists speculator that contains NFS client and forwards the message to the relay module with libbiz. Libbiz is an implementation of PBFT. At the replica side, libbiz is also installed with speculation shim layer and NFS daemon. They evaluated PBFT-CS by comparing it with PBFT and GGBA. Their evaluation environments include LAN with latency injections, for example, 2.5 milliseconds and 50 milliseconds for simulating geo-replication. They used four replicas and 100 logical clients in a single, in a single client process. And they conducted the following experiments like overhead evaluation, 
on top of the PBFD protocol and a shared counter application for measuring throughput and latency. And finally, they measure the cost of speculation failure with faulty primary. Before evaluation results, each experiment is conducted by assuming three different topologies, such as primary local topology, primary remote top topology, and the uniform topology. The primary local topology defines that the client and primary are in the same site, and the primary remote topology defines that the client and primary are in the different site, but client has a backup replica in the same site. And the uniform topology defines that there will exist no nearby replica in the same site. And this means that the communication latency is all the same across all replicas. And this artificially injected delay can be 0.5 millisecond uh, or 50 millisecond. First evaluation, shared counter, and the primary local topology in which a the client locates near the client near the primary. They measured the time taken to run 2,000 updates using the shared counter service in the primary local topology over bearing network delay. The result shows that the runtime of PBFT and GGBA increases faster than PBFTCS, while PBFTCS is almost the same as the no replication version as the network delay increases. Same workloads and shared counter service, but with different topology with uniform and primary remote topology. Due to different topology where the uh, client and primary are at a different site, the increase of network delay affects the runtime of PBFTCS and no replication setting. Even with that, we can observe that PBFTCS outperforms PBFT. And this evaluation shows that additional overhead by PBFTCS, which is implemented on top of the PBFT. There are four major overhead by delaying PBFTCS. The first major overhead comes from early replies. This is because each speculative request accompanies a speculative response from the primary. And the second most overhead is that the size of the speculative request. This means that as the number of predicates or dependent operations increases, the overhead is also increased. Third overhead comes from their new implementation of event-driven programming, rather than a simple blocking design. The last overhead is, is predicate checking for speculation correctness. Evaluating costs of speculation failure is also performed with a workload of Apache build benchmark in primary local topology. They run this evaluation over bearing network delay 0 millisecond, 2.5 millisecond, 15 millisecond to demonstrate the differences of runtime cost between PBFTCS with no failure, PBFTCS with 1% failure, and PBFT. The result is that at zero delay injection, PBFTCS with 1% failure shows that 3% slowdown compared to PBFTCS with no failure and 9% slowdown and 9% slowdown at 2.5 millisecond delay injection and 29% slowdown at 15 millisecond delay injection. This result is due to the fact that as network delay increases, the size of dependent requests are also increases, which results in a high cost of rollback and high network bandwidth consumption. To conclude, this paper proposes a general approach to client speculation with replicated services. And the paper design and build PBFTCS protocol to reduce the impact of network and protocol latency, which is especially important in geographically dispersed deployment. Thank you for your attention. I'll get a few questions 